Greetings, the chairman, officers, delegates, and friends and colleagues. It is a blessed privilege and honor to bring to you the report of the mighty moving and acts of the Holy Spirit in the Sabbath School Department of the South England Conference during the past quadrennium. The text that underlines the theological philosophy of the department was, and still is, Luke 19.10. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The department was driven by asking and answering three key questions. If not now, when? If not me, who? If not here, where? These questions were asked to ignite a passion for the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The team of the department was seeking the lost in a changing world. The vision, a highly trained and motivated lady, spirit-filled, responding to the cross-cultural challenges of evangelizing the South England Territory now. The mission to move the Seventh-day Adventist laity and clergy of the SEC into diverse facets of witnessing so that all can be grafted into the kingdom of God. The general theme for Sabbath School was Sabbath School, a place of growth, encouragement, and inspiration. Recognizing that the Sabbath School is the primary conservation unit in our church, E.G. White wrote in 1889, our Sabbath schools are nothing less than Bible societies and that in the sacred work of teaching the truths of God's word, they can accomplish far more than they have hitherto accomplished. The Sabbath school, when rightly managed, possesses marvelous power and is adapted to doing a great work, but it is not now what it may and should be. The influence growing out of Sabbath school work should improve and enlarge the church. Testimonies on Sabbath School Work, page 29. During the Cradgenum, training programs in the area of Sabbath School were held at the Evangelism Expo and over 40 local churches throughout the territory of the South England Conference. Further, there were two powerful Sabbath school training programs called Hit the Mark, held during the Quadrennium. Sabbath school personnel from around the conference came to these informative events. The training was also taken to Ipswich for Area 8 and London in an effort to reach as many Sabbath school personnel as possible. We were able to train over 600 Sabbath school personnel during that period. Our main facilitator, a very dynamic Sabbath school course, uh, coach, Curtis Hall, had an, did an excellent job in demonstrating strategies that can be used to liven up the Sabbath school. March 8 to 10, 2013 was historic here in the South England Conference also. The Sabbath School Children Ministries, Disability Ministries, and Family Ministries combined to host Teach 2013 at the Boston Lakes Resort. The emphasis of this program was on the techniques and methods of teaching and facilitating the process of learning and retention. The Sabbath School Department was very fortunate to have the exceptional Dr. Kathy Beagles, professor at Andrews University, as its main facilitator. She was ably assisted by Sister Jackie Bishop, a children's Sabbath School coach from America. Together, they modeled how the participants can, with those they teach, uh, interact with those they teach so that they can learn, uh, so learning can take place. They were also exposed to many skills that they can employ. In the feedback section of the program, it was very, very positive. And at the end of the program, all made pledges to do their best to teach and inspire and encourage. The Sabbath school is the heart of the church. And if the heart is sick, the whole church is sick. Recognizing this, I worked with churches to set aside Sabbaths where Sabbath school was the emphasis for the entire day. During 2013 and 14, many churches organized this program to great effect called Super Sabbath School Days. I'm happy. I was very happy to be present 
at these programs. It was a wonderful privilege to work with all the Sabbath school staff to ensure that these programs reach their objectives. The vision was that now that this idea would spread around the conference, more churches would host such programs, and it did happen. Sabbath after Sabbath, as I visited the many churches in the South England Conference, it became clear to me that there is a ground swell of motivation and willingness to do the work of the Lord. I saw the Holy Spirit moving mightily on the hearts and lives of our members during Sabbath school lesson study. The revival of their hearts in Sabbath school was and still is one of the motivating factors pushing them to do something to help humanity find the kingdom of God. The concept of the Sabbath School Action Unit has been around a while. However, it, is still, it still remains one of the best devices to breathe life into the Sabbath School. The concept has to do with reducing the Sabbath School class sizes so that only 8 to 10 persons make up a class. During the quadrennial period, the department tried running training programs in a number of churches to get them to buy in to the concept. Among the many churches that have implemented the concept, I must mention the Holloway Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Clapton SDA Church, who embraced the concept as soon as it was introduced and are using it successfully. They report that more members are coming out to Sabbath school on time. There's a greater interest as, 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 as well in the fulfilling of the four pillars of Sabbath school, that is the study of the Word of God, fellowship, world mission, and community outreach. In an effort to continually create a paradigm shift in the way teachers facilitate the weekly Sabbath school lesson study, the department sent out a weekly summary of the Sabbath school lesson to over 1,500 members, teachers, and leaders. Included in the mailing list were members of other conferences in Europe, NEC, the missions and officers of the TED and beyond. These lesson summaries guided the facilitators to use techniques to make the lesson interactive. Many of those who received the lesson summaries would forward them on to others who are not on the list, thus doubling the distribution. One of the innovations of the department during this period of reporting was the production and distribution of adult Sabbath school program helps. The idea was to give our Sabbath school leaders hands-on programs and ideas that they could use to expand and develop. The demands of work, etc., sometimes leaves our lay leaders looking for help with this very challenging department. Hence, the production of this much needed resource. The feedback received by the department was very positive. Many of the programs used expanded and even being done as a series. The program bank now stands at over 200 programs ready to use. In conclusion, many of the programs and works were done by this department that cannot be reported because of restrictions. I'm grateful to God for His strength, the energy and the safe traveling mercies given to me during this period of reporting. I also thank my wife Carol and our four beautiful children for their patience and understanding as a ministerial family. Thanks to my predecessor, Dr. Terry Messenger, on whose work I have built. A big thank you to my administrative assistant, Sis uh, Mavis Bramble, for her untiring efforts and excellent work in the department. I give God thanks as well for our Sabbath school personnel, leaders, pastors, and church leaders who make sacrifices to move the work of God forward. Thanks to Sister Chucks Golding for volunteering with the department. A big thank you to all our members for their sacrifice and faithfulness in the cause of Christ. My prayer is that when the roll is called up yonder, we all will be there. Go SEC!